this is definitely some really impressive performance. You gotta keep in mind, I mean, we're on integrated graphics right now. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome Ryzen 6000 series powered mini PC from B-Link known as the SER6. This is using a new Ryzen 6000 series APU that I haven't been able to test yet. It's actually the Ryzen 7 6800H. 8 cores, 16 threads, and of course we've got those RDNA2 integrated graphics. So we should see some really great performance out of this tiny PC, and uh, as you can see, I mean, it is definitely a mini PC. I've always been a big fan of B-Link's SER series, at least the design, and this has a little bit of a blue tint, not sure how it's coming across on camera, but I think it looks good. It's definitely different from their other ones. And with the SER6, we do have a little bit of customization that we can do. They include a red top, and we've also got the stock blue top. But inside of the box, we're also going to get a 120-watt power supply. We've got a couple USB cables. Got a smaller one here if you want to mount this on the back of your monitor. And we've got some hardware to mount a 2.5-inch drive inside of the unit. Now, this is actually B-Link's second Ryzen 6000 series mini PC. Their first one was known as the GTR6, and it did come in with a larger form factor. I mean, not by much, but I did want to give you this quick comparison here. As you can see, the SER6 is coming in at half the size. But you got to keep in mind that the GTR6 had the Ryzen 9 6900HX, and with the SER6 here, we've got the 6800H. When it comes to I.O. on the new SER6, up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack and USB 4. This is actually a full-function 40 gig USB 4 port, so it is compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 for easy use of external GPUs, and we will test one by the end of the video. Taking a look at the sides, not much going on here. We've got a little bit of ventilation, but around back, we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, one more full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. We've also got USB 2.0 and two full-size HDMI 2.1 ports. So in total, we can do three displays out. We're going to use that USB 4 up front and both of these HDMI ports. Before we go over the full specs and then get into some testing, I wanted to do a quick tear down. So I just pulled the bottom off and this might look a little odd to you if you've seen inside of these B-Link PCs in the past. Now, obviously, down here, we've got enough room for a 2.5-inch drive. We've got all the connections we need, but you might notice we've got a fan. This is their new NVMe slash RAM cooling system that they've been using in these 6000 series PCs. And it definitely keeps those SSD and RAM temps way down. And it actually comes out fairly easy with four screws. And right under here, we've got our NVMe SSD and RAM. B-Link has been adding name brand RAM and SSDs to their mini PCs for a little while now. The majority of what I've seen so far, when it comes to the SSD, it's usually Kingston, and for the RAM, it's either ADATA or Crucial, but since these new 6000 series PCs use DDR5, these will be using Crucial RAM. And when it comes to the CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 6800H, 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.2 GHz, and a boost up to 4.7. We should be putting out some really good performance here, it's based on Zen 3 Plus. Graphics are handled by the Radeon 680M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 2. We've got 12 compute units up to 2200 MHz in the H variant. 32 GB of DDR5 at 4800 MHz. This will support up to a 2 TB NVMe SSD. We've also got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and out of the box, this will come installed with Windows 11, but you could always install Linux on this unit. After all, it's just an x86 platform. If anybody's interested in seeing SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS, running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. Alright, so here we are. I've been up and running for a little while now, and this little thing has been trucking along. I mean, this little 6800H actually does a really great job with gaming. Uh, I wanted to check out the TDP. Now, unfortunately, from the BIOS that we have with this, we cannot adjust the TDP or the RAM speed. Hopefully, that changes down the road, but uh, yeah, as you can see, we've got that 6800H. 32 gigabytes of RAM at 4800 megahertz DDR5 and the Radeon 680M iGPU. So usually with these mini PCs, we can go directly in the BIOS and set the overall TDP, but with this, we're kind of stuck right there at, I'd say, 45 watt. And yeah, it jumps up to 45, but you know, when it needs a little bit of a boost, I've seen it jump up to around 58 watts, which isn't bad. I mean, it definitely helps out with that GPU 
keeping the clocks up on both. But uh, the very first thing I did was run a few benchmarks, so let's go ahead and check those out first. When it comes to Geekbench 5, the 6800H can really put it down. 1,546 on the single core, multi 9,112. Not bad at all for a mobile chip and a super small form factor PC. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid, total score here 25,729. Fire Strike 6,359. And finally, Time Spy with a 2,726. Now the highest score I've ever been able to get out of the Radeon 680M iGPU is around 3100 and that was on the 6800HX which actually runs at around 2400 megahertz on this 680M and I also had 6000 megahertz RAM. I'm pretty sure we could get this 6800H up there if we were able to add faster RAM but right now the BIOS is a bit locked down. So far with these synthetic benchmarks it's not looking too shabby for this little chip but now it's time to move over to some real world gaming. Forza Horizon 5, you know I had to jump in the Hoonicorn, if you know, you know, super sad day, but here we are at 1080p, medium settings, no FSR, and we can get an average of around 73 FPS with this game, and of course, you know, turning FSR on, we can definitely get much higher. At 720p with FSR set to performance, we can get an average of around 115 FPS. The latest updates for both of the Spider-Man games have increased performance on these APUs dramatically. Here we are at 720p low with FSR set to performance. We can get an average of 67 FPS and I gotta give props to the devs. They've done a really great job optimizing this game for these lower end systems. So I was really hoping that we could do this at 1080p low settings with FSR set to performance. And it gets really close, but unfortunately we just don't have the power to kind of push this over 60 at 1080p. At very low settings with FSR set to ultra performance, we can definitely do it, but it really degrades the picture quality and I personally don't think it's worth it. One game I really love running on these APUs is Doom Eternal because I've always ended up getting really great performance. 1080p, medium settings, we can get over 60. We got an average of 68 FPS out of this game. And if you need a little more, we've always got dynamic resolution scale or static scale. I know it's an older one, but I love throwing it in here. And with those newer Radeon drivers, this performs great on these APUs, even on Vega. But uh, GTA 5 1080p normal settings on the 6800H with that 680M iGPU, we can average 89 FPS with this game. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low settings. And kind of just like Spider-Man, the devs have been doing a great job optimizing this game, and a lot of it does come down to the newer Radeon drivers. But with this, we can get an average of 71 FPS, 720p, low. So I got my hopes up, and I was really wanting to go to 1080p, but uh, 1080p, low, we're right there under 60. I mean, it's getting so close with a lot of these games. And with faster RAM, we could probably hit those marks, but uh, right now, with that 4800 megahertz RAM, it's just not possible with Cyberpunk 2077. And finally, I wanted to test out Modern Warfare 2, where at 1080p with the auto preset. Once you boot the game up, it'll ask you if you want to automatically configure everything. And I just hit yes with this little APU. And this actually turns FSR to balanced. So at performance, we could get much better out of it. But uh, we got an average of 96 FPS, a low of 59. Not bad for integrated graphics whatsoever. I mean, the game is definitely playable and it works great even on older Vega 8 graphics with a lower resolution. So with the RDNA 2 iGPU, this thing's putting out some great performance, but uh, remember we've got USB 4 here and this is full function 40 gig USB 4, which makes it really easy to connect the Thunderbolt eGPU. I'm using my Aorus dock here. This actually originally came with a water cooled 2080, but I've swapped it out for a 3060. The Thunderbolt dock that I normally use finally died, so I've got one on order. I've just taken that 2080 out of here and put in an RTX 3060. It's a non-TI variant. And as you can see, pops right up. USB 4 compatibility with Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. So now, instead of using the integrated graphics, we've got access to a more powerful graphics card, the RTX 3060. So now, instead of getting around 55 FPS with God of War at low settings and FSR set to performance, 
we can run it at 1080p ultra settings all day long with this little setup. So uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely adds some really great GPU performance. And I will tell you, I've been doing some experimenting with USB 4 and Thunderbolt. Not all cables are made the same. You got to make sure you have a good Thunderbolt cable. Another thing I like to take a look at is total system power consumption. So while I'm testing with these mini PCs, it's plugged into a kilowatt meter and this measures total system power from the wall. At idle, pulls around 16 watts. Gaming, 59 watts. And the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the CPU and GPU to 100% was 78 watts. So it's not a super low power consumption PC, but when you compare it to a bigger gaming PC, yeah, I mean, this is kind of sipping power. So overall, I think the B-Link SER6 is a great little mini PC. It's putting out much better performance than the 4000 or the 5000 series chips that we've seen in the past. And I've always been a big fan of B-Link's SER design. It's got a very small form factor. I've always loved the way they look. We've got a little bit of customization with those swappable tops there. I kind of wish they would have sent a black one with it. But, you know, the whole case itself has got a little bit of a blue tint to it. Not sure how I feel about the red, but that blue that comes with it does look really great. I hope I can get my hands on an unlocked BIOS so I can overclock that RAM or just add faster RAM and set it in the BIOS because I've got some 5600 megahertz RAM that overclocks up to 6000 really well, DDR5 obviously with these new 6000 series chips. But yeah, I mean, if I could get this up to even 5600 megahertz, we could definitely get way better performance out of this iGPU. But until then, I mean, this is the performance we have with that 4800 megahertz RAM and it isn't bad at all. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the performance coming out of this little SER6. I think it's great for what we have here. And, you know, if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.